drinker. I don't know about you guys. Uh, Matt is a red wine drinker, by the way. That's why we embrace his brothers. What's your favorite grape? Favorite varietal? Varietal. I would say, you know, I, I don't think that I have a favorite. Really? I really, I think that uh, the beauty of wine is that there's a place for all of it. So, some days a nice glass of rosé is wonderful. Some days, like, you know, a nice organ pinot is just the perfect thing. Always keeping it sexual. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I, I, I mean, California cabs are obviously uh, some of my favorites, but we'll I'm from Oregon, so I was gonna say, we'll I grew up in the Willamette Will Will Valley for sure. Yeah, Willamette Valley. Uh, I grew up like basically 15 minutes from some very popular wine producers and went to school with some of their kids. So. <laughs> on my my one uh, one red M and M item on my rider at the shows. Uh, that sounded very confusing, but the one thing I Rockstar asked for is they must provide a bottle of organ pinot for me wherever I'm playing, so they don't always provide it, but at least I asked for it. It's the sound cool. Sometimes it says Kirkland on the bottle. It's my favorite. So when... Chico! What was that? Chico, I like that. Um, what do you do, because you know, you listen to the songs, I got the album stuck in the car still to this day. And what do you do to stay kind of inspired as far as when you're writing? Because you do write some pretty complex songs. Do you have to have like a catastrophic event happen to you in order to have like a, a great song? Or, or... That helps sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like what? What are some examples of some stuff that happens in your life that, that will inspire a great song? I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, this record is very, well, getting married will help too. That like a woman is a good influence <laughs> for good and bad on your songs. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think that, uh, I don't know, I think that you can make the very simple thing into something profound. And um, You know, you talked about the acoustic tour, there's a song called Learning to Love Again, which I love on my new record, which was just our road manager who was going through something, saying like, I've always wanted to pull over on the side of the road and run through one of the fields of wheat, you know? And I was like, I pulled over, I'm like, well, here we are, man, let's do it. <laughs> and he's running off through the field of wheat. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and it became the song, you know, this that was the real you running through the fields of gold wide open, you know? Standing in places no pictures contained. And I, I, that's like, you, sometimes the ordinary stuff becomes very profound, and sometimes it's like getting your heart broken or falling in love or deciding to get married that is, inspires a song. I think that's a, your, your pursuit as a songwriter is to put the things that we're all feeling from the good and the bad and the mundane into kind of words that maybe not everyone can express. And when you find a song that really can, can sum up what someone who can't put their words into feelings is, that's when you've really uh, done something great. So... Do you ever hesitate to tell people? It's NPR again. I know. <laughs> Do you ever hesitate like to tell people? Uh, Sorry. Intimate things? Oh, well, intimate things. Yeah. Hey, like how much of your life do you put on there for display? Do you like to uh, connect? You know. Yeah, I think you. For me, I've always found that I'm much better at like writing documentary type of. If I was a movie, I would be a better documentary than like. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so like, uh, the lyrics that I bleed and that seem very personal and the scariest songs to write and the ones that seem too personal tend to be the ones that resonate the most with with people around me. And so, yeah, it is, it's a fine line of, of how much am I going to give out there. And But I, I've made the decision to kind of um, be vulnerable and see, take what comes from that and yeah. Speaking of taking what comes, does anybody have a question from the audience? Yes, in the back. You have to come all the way up, just yell it out. I can hear you. Hi. Um, I'm a creative person, just like you are, and I know that when things are not right at home or in your life, that it's really hard to pull from that uh, creativeness, and sometimes you might have a devastating loss, like a death or something in your family. And how do you, you know, get past that so you can get back to that creative flow? 
to start writing again. What do you do when you have block? We went to Dr. <laughs> Phil now. I like this. Wow, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your name? Tess. Tess. I don't know. I mean, for me, I mean, I don't, you know, on a personal level, what you have to do to work through things is different maybe than what you have to do creatively. And sometimes they're interconnected. Sometimes well, if you're not, not happy, it's hard to get that creative. Yeah. I th I, 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 sometimes I've always been told just when it comes to creative stuff, if you just write about what you're struggling with, if you're, then you write about what you just said to me and, um, and the frustration that you have. You know, if you can't write, write about the fact that you're frustrated. You can't write, <laughs> and you always find a place to kind of start um, start the ball rolling. So how long does it take you to get back to that space? I don't know. <laughs> there's been eight months where I've written a song, and then there's yeah, days yeah. where I've written three songs in a day. So if I could pay a million dollars to understand the muse and how that works, I would, but I don't. And if I had a million dollars to pay for that, <laughs> I would. What about like uh, what about social media? Facebook, good thing, bad thing. Twitter, good thing, bad thing. I like it, yeah. 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 What's your favorite thing about it? I get in trouble more, but <laughs> uh, I know when everything's broken. <laughs> Someone's like, hey, I can't buy tickets to your show tomorrow. You're like, you can fix it. <laughs> That's way too practical of an answer. I, I mean, it's really I love the exchange and um, being able to tell people. Hey, that I really enjoyed the show we just played an hour ago. Or, that's really, you know, that's I check it all the time, and it just keep feels. I feel like I'm connected to the people experiencing what I love to do, which is my music. You know, and seeing how people are interacting with it, and um, I think the days of kind of, it, and it falls in line with my whole thing, which is vulnerability and you know, choosing to write about things that are very personal and not some people. If you're trying to be real distant and Lady Gaga and you never show anyone, like, you know, she won't drink water in front of people because it makes her look human. You know, there's that's a true thing she said. Um, but I, but I, I think that that's her thing, and that she'll was, walk on it. Yeah, get yes, hard. Exactly. Um, but that's that's a different approach, you know. And that that's like, if you're trying to be larger than life, like I just that wasn't my thing, and that wasn't what I was trying to do. And so, Twitter really helps me connect and get uh, sure. everyone on the same page. Yes, go ahead. Did you really meet your lady in anthropology? Oh, God, so, yeah. What were you doing there at first? Inquiring minds want to know. Did I meet my wife in anthropology? That is a true statement. I did meet her. She was wearing purple boots. And um, <laughs> she, I was shopping for my sister-in-law. She was with a friend shopping. And so I was, my angle was like, uh, hey, um, what do you think about this dress? I don't know what I'm doing, picking out dresses. And she was like, I know what you're trying to do, and that dress is ugly, so like, back off. Like, that's kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. Did it work? Did you have to drop it? No, it didn't work. I took a lot of persistence. Did you drop your own name anywhere in the conversation? <laughs> no, it wouldn't have worked either, because that's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like we eventually, through friends, I knew one of her friends, so it wasn't just a creep walking up, like I knew someone she was with at the boutique, or anthropology, so I had that going for me, and then we hung out a couple times, and it was literally, I think we'd been on like five dates, and she was like, oh yeah, I heard one of your songs, you're pretty good, like that, <laughs> it didn't work, that's marriage material right like, there, I'm really good, okay? <laughs> I'm a big deal. <laughs> Many leather bound books. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did she believe you? Uh, I'm still trying to convince her, but still. <laughs> Those of you from the 707, uh, yeah, Woo! doing a show at, at the Nap at Dovetown, aren't you? Coming up? Uh, where? What, what do you got tomorrow night? Tonight. Don't you have a date tomorrow night? Tonight. I think that's tonight. Oh, it's tonight. tonight. Sorry, it's Wednesday. <laughs> it's in Napa, yeah. In the 70, I don't know your inside words you've thrown out me though. 707. Sorry, you thought you were the only one with flow. Yo. So, anyways, it's gonna be in Napa. It'll be awesome. Don't miss the show. Matt Carney, continue.